So first the Pixel took incredible photos and then the iPhone took incredible photos. But which camera takes more incredible photos? Let's find out. What's up YouTube, it's your boy. BMAC. And if this is your first time here to this channel, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button with all notifications turned on so you never miss another video on this channel. And if you've been here before, welcome back. So today, as you can see, I have the Google Pixel 4 XL and the Apple iPhone 11 Pro Max in hand. Both great phones, both phenomenal camera systems, but as is usually the case in tech, we gotta get to the bottom of which camera system we think is actually better. So let's get right into it, breaking things down with the tech specs of each device. Starting things out with the Google Pixel 4 XL, as you can see, we have a rear facing camera system here composed of two different lenses. We have a wide angle lens and a tele lens. The wide angle lens with a 12.2 megapixel sensor and an f1.7 aperture, while the tele lens has a 16 megapixel sensor and f2.4 aperture, both the wide angle lens and the tele lens with autofocus and optical image stabilization. In addition to that, the Pixel 4 also does have a front facing ultra wide selfie cam and it has an 8 megapixel sensor an f2 aperture and fixed focus comparing that with the iphone 11 pro max over here which you can clearly see has three rear facing camera lenses. We have a wide angle lens, a tele lens, and an ultra wide angle lens. All three lenses with a 12 megapixel sensor and autofocus, while only the wide angle lens and the tele lens offer optical image stabilization. The wide angle lens also has an f1.8 aperture, the tele lens has an f2 aperture, and the ultra wide angle lens has an f2.4 aperture. And in addition to those three rear facing lenses, we also have a front facing camera, an ultra wide selfie camera. It's got a 12 megapixel sensor, an f2.2 aperture, and fixed focus. And that's all fine and dandy looking at those tech specs seeing which one is better on paper but what do the specs actually mean how do they translate to the real world that's what we're going to do right now compare the different cameras and i think the best way of actually comparing the cameras is breaking everything down into different categories so let's take a look at some comparison photos that i have here on my ipad from each different device we'll open this up take a look at them let's break this down and we'll break it down by starting things off with portrait mode. Right off the bat, I can see that both cameras have a very impressive portrait mode. They deliver pretty incredible background blurs, which provides pretty professional looking results. This is my little sister, Molly. Big thank you to Molly for sticking it out and actually modeling for me in these example photos. And just looking at this at face value in general, I do think I prefer the iPhone portrait mode over the pixel portrait mode for a few different reasons. The first being that the iPhone background blurring just seems a little bit more natural, a little more realistic with the bokeh that it creates. Overall, I just think it looks a little bit more visually appealing. And that's probably also in part that the actual iPhone background blur masking seems to be more believable than the Pixel. The masking looks better blended and therefore less noticeable on the iPhone, whereas it looks a little more aggressive and therefore a little bit more photoshopped looking on the Pixel. A big shout out to my dad for modeling in this example photo. And you can see this here, this seems to be the case on humans, but also pets. We have another model here, my friend's dog Winnie. So thank you to Winnie for modeling for these example photos right here. And so on humans and pets, that's the kind of situation we're dealing with. Again, the iPhone just looks a little bit more natural, a little bit more realistic. Where things really start to differ, however, is on objects. For whatever reason, it seems like the Pixel blows the iPhone out of the water when it comes to edge detection on objects. And I guess this makes sense, right? Because obviously objects have more well-defined edges than humans or pets do with hair or fur. And when you have that more aggressive edge detection and masking on the Pixel, it makes sense why that would be better on objects. On the multiple object examples that I shot in portrait mode on both devices, Devices, the Pixel just consistently performs better, even on the smallest and most difficult to process edges of objects. The edge detection is just so much better when it comes to objects on the Pixel because it actually works. It results in a usable shot. Whereas on the iPhone, sometimes the iPhone will decide to mask out a certain part of an object within the photo that pretty much spoils the entire portrait mode effect. This is the way I look at it. When you're using portrait mode on either humans or pets, the iPhone's the way to go, but on objects, the edge detection on the Pixel is just too good and it actually works, so the Pixel wins on objects. So do with that information what you will. Next up, let's talk about the wide angle lens. Both wide angle lenses on both devices came up with some pretty darn good looking results, and they look very similar, but with some differences. If we check out these two different photos, you can see that the colors on the iPhone just seem to handle cooler tones a little bit better than the Pixel. This can be completely hit or miss depending on the shooting situation or what you're actually photographing 
thing. But on landscape photos, which I seem to shoot the most of and post in my Instagram feed the most, I noticed this especially. In terms of detail and sharpening, each photo is honestly almost identical. Maybe just a slight advantage given to the iPhone because of that new Deep Fusion technology we have that Apple is now incorporating into the new iPhones. But Deep Fusion isn't used on every single photo. In fact, on the wide angle lens, it's usually only used in low to medium lighting situations. So probably not even in this example photo. But Deep Fusion aside, I do think there are still some subtle differences, but you really only start to notice those subtle differences if you're really zooming in here and pixel peeping. So just take that with a grain of salt. Where I do start to see a more noticeable difference, however, building on the colors, detail, and sharpening is the dynamic range. I think the iPhone is pretty consistently providing results with more details in the highlights and shadows than the Pixel is. That is not to say that the dynamic range on the Pixel is bad, but if we're looking here at comparisons, I do think it's better on the iPhone. It's not like we're losing a lot of information on the Pixel, but it's just the way that the iPhone composes the image and brings out the details in the highlights and shadows that the Pixel doesn't, that makes me like the iPhone at dynamic range more. Time and time again, the iPhone just seems to do a better job of taking into consideration all the different elements within a photo, lighting, detail, focus, sharpening colors, all of that, and balancing them in such a way where you could almost just immediately tell when a photo is taken on an iPhone and not another smartphone device. It's like when you look at these comparison photos, these iPhone photos are like post ready. You could just immediately post this online without any editing or enhancing and you're good to go. Whereas there are a lot of pixel photos where I'm like, yeah, I'd, I'd touch that up a little bit. I'd give that the BMAC touch to edit and enhance it a little bit before I would go about posting it. But then we got to talk about the tele lens. And this is a very interesting category to talk about for several different reasons. At face value, once again, both cameras deliver pretty wildly impressive tele lens results. Without pixel peeping or zooming in, both look great. When we do start to pixel peep or zoom in, however, that's where some immediate differences start to jump out at me. First of all, colors in the tele lens photos seem to be pretty much on par with what we saw in the wide angle lens category we just talked about. Colors are great on both devices, but the iPhone does seem to bring out more vividness in cooler tones, while the pixel handles warmer tones really well. But when it comes down to detail and sharpening, yeah, let, let's talk about this. When I zoom into the iPhone photos, you could see an incredible amount of detail being preserved. The Pixel, on the other hand, seems to apply almost too much aggressive noise reduction. This provides a cleaner image overall with less digital artifacting or noise, but at the expense of detail. If we zoom in here, the fact that you could see individual leaf spots with the iPhone tele lens and not on the Pixel tele lens that's a pretty good example of the iPhone doing a better job at sharpening in detail than the Pixel is. And this despite the fact that the tele lens has a 16 megapixel sensor on the Pixel and a 12 megapixel sensor on the iPhone. But now we're getting into something that's probably where this comes into light more. That clean image that the Pixel's coming up with with the tele lens really starts to make sense and shine past the 2x focal length. With some photos that were taken at 8x on each phone, you could clearly see Google's Super Res Zoom technology coming into play here. The Super Res Zoom technology is basically Google Google's way of allowing you to zoom into a photo all the way up to 8x and still get a super sharp image throughout the frame. And at 8x, the Pixel definitely delivers a cleaner, more impressive result. But I will say this, with a little noise reduction applied to the iPhone photo at 8x, now both photos are starting to look pretty darn similar. And I bring this up and I bring post editing into play here because this is the most important thing. As you could probably tell by now, there is no ultra wide angle lens on the Pixel 4 like there is on the iPhone 11 Pro. Google backed up this decision by saying the tele lens is probably what consumers are going to appreciate and use more on the Pixel 4. And they also pretty much argue that their super res zoom technology with that super sharp image throughout the frame from 2x all the way up to 8x was going to be more helpful and more useful. And yes, even though that's true, even though the Pixel Pixel 4 straight out of camera does come up with a better picture at 8x. After a little noise reduction, which really could be just like a 30 second process, both photos are almost identical. Not quite, but pretty darn close. So therefore, I don't think the tele lens on the Pixel 4, I don't think that super res zoom technology on the Pixel 4 really makes up for the huge gap that the missing ultra wide angle lens creates. Which brings me to a category the iPhone 11 Pro is automatically going to win, the ultra wide angle lens category. I gotta admit, I'm a little surprised that Google thought it would be a good idea to not include an ultra wide angle lens on the Pixel 4 when you're competing with phones like the 11 Pro. Because an ultra wide angle lens is fun, helpful, useful and powerful, really. Because listen, you could always crop into a photo. You lose a little resolution by doing so, but you could always do that and be okay. But you cannot zoom out if you don't have that ultra wide angle lens that 
angle to work with. And because of that, if you ask me, that's a huge loss for the Pixel 4. And that's really all I could say about it. There's not much more to say. I just, I feel like it should be there. It's not, and I don't think the tele lens on the Pixel 4 makes up for that. I'll let you guys duke it out in the comment section below with the whole Ultra versus tele lens battle. You, that's up to you to decide the rest. Go ahead, comment down below your thoughts. That's that's all I'm saying on it. But now that we've covered all of the rear facing cameras, let's talk about the front facing cameras on these two devices. Yes, we will quickly cover your selfie needs. And I see this kind of disappointedly because I am not a selfie guy whatsoever. I take maybe like three selfies per year, maybe two. So this was kind of a tough category for me to test, but the things I do for you guys, I tested it, let's talk about it. I think it basically comes down to just personal preference. If you look past my crooked sunglasses and obvious discomfort for having to take a selfie in public in these example photos, there are some differences worth noting. For one thing, the Pixel Ultra Wide Selfie Cam is just a little wider than the iPhone Ultra Wide Selfie Cam, which could be useful to have that additional wideness depending on what you're shooting. And I think the Pixel pretty clearly preserves more detail here, which is more obvious on the texture of my Sherpa jacket. And then if we're talking about colors, colors seem to be a little on the warm side for the iPhone while a little on the cooler side for the Pixel. And then if we're going to be talking about portrait modes, the portrait mode works great on both devices with the selfie cam. Again, if I had to pick one, I'd choose the iPhone for the same reasons we talked about in the portrait mode category in the start of this video. And then once again, you do get those portrait mode lighting effects and edit tools on the iPhone that you don't get on the Pixel. But then again, the Pixel has a night mode selfie mode that allows you to take selfies in low light that you can't really do on the iPhone. So you can choose whatever style or look you like more here when it comes to your selfies. Those are the examples. You can decide for yourself which one you like more. That's pretty much the extent of my expertise when it comes to selfies. But speaking of that selfie night mode we just talked about, let's talk about that category itself. Let's talk about night mode on both of these devices. And night mode was probably my favorite category to test because a lot of good things going on here. You could call it night mode, night sight, low light mode, whatever you want. Basically, we're talking about being able to take photos at night or in very low lighting situations on either device. I'm just gonna call it night mode. And we gotta give credit to the Pixel because I think the Pixel did basically put night mode on the map for smartphone devices. But now that the 11 Pro has that mode, we gotta compare the two. Quickly comparing night mode photos of each device. Again, pretty darn similar results here. That kind of seems to be a trend here when we're comparing the photos between these two phones. In terms of color, I have found the iPhone to have more visually appealing colors. And the iPhone does seem to be a little bit on the warmer side, while the Pixel is a little bit on the cooler side. That kind of makes the iPhone night mode photos look a little nicer, while the Pixel night mode photos look a little bit more realistic. I prefer the slightly better colors and the warmness of the iPhone night mode, but you could choose whichever one is right for you. There's really not a whole lot to talk about when it comes to detail and sharpening as we're working with less light to begin with minimal information so no real clear winner when it comes to that in either camera but when it comes to dynamic range we kind of automatically have to give the advantage to the pixel and give the win to the pixel and this is solely because of astrophotography mode astrophotography is a new mode on the pixel devices that literally lets you shoot photos of the stars or the freaking milky way right on your smartphone device, the Pixel. The shots I've been able to pull off in astrophotography mode on the Pixel is nothing short of mind blowing. And quite honestly, it's probably one of the main reasons why whenever I'm going out to shoot at night, I will bring the Pixel 4 along with me. So if we had to break it down like this, night mode minus astrophotography mode, I'd say the iPhone wins, but because of the astrophotography mode, the iPhone can't really compete. And last, but certainly not least, I know we basically just compared photos throughout this entire camera comparison, but we cannot forget about video. And when it comes down to it with available resolutions and frame rates, the iPhone's gonna win. The iPhone could shoot in 4K 60 frames per second using those rear facing cameras as opposed to the Pixel, which can't. And then we get 24 frames per second frame rates on the iPhone, which we don't get on the Pixel. My personal favorite frame rate to shoot in for everyday work on these smartphones. But that aside, I did shoot some clips at the beach at 4K 30 frames per second on each device. And when it comes to stabilization, both devices were incredibly stable. The clips literally look like I filmed them on either a tripod or a gimbal, even though they were all shot handheld. And the video stabilization itself is almost identical on each camera with maybe just a slight advantage given to the iPhone, because I do see a little little bit more shakiness going on in the pixel stabilization. In terms of color, sharpening, and dynamic range, a couple things to talk about. I guess you could say the colors look a little bit better on the iPhone. They're just like maybe a tad bit richer. Again, super close.
close though. The sharpening is perhaps just a little too overdone on the pixel footage. It looks a lot more digital because of that. So I'd like a little less sharpening in that pixel footage to kind of put it on par with the natural look that the iPhone provides. Remember, you could always add sharpening. It's a lot more difficult to take sharpening out of footage. And the dynamic range is a lot closer than I thought. I honestly thought the iPhone is going to take home the cake when it comes to dynamic range, but the pixel's right there with it. So if we have to break this down, I'm probably going to have to give the win to the iPhone when it comes to the video category, only because of those slight improvements the camera and video system has over the pixel, but especially because of the resolutions and frame rates that are available on the iPhone that aren't natively on the pixel. Yes, you could always get a third party app to kind of fix some of those issues, but I'm focusing just on the stock camera app in this camera comparison video. But you guys have seen the examples, you've seen the clips, you've seen the photos. What do you guys think? Please do me a huge favor and comment down below your thoughts on the different comparisons between the two cameras you saw in this video. Do you like the Pixel 4 camera better? Do you like the iPhone camera better? Let me know. Comment down below. Duke it out. Don't fight. Don't get nasty. But you know, have a creative discussion talking about which camera you like more. In the meantime, it's only 421 in the afternoon. Um, I guess I'm just going to sit here and count down the hours until it's nighttime once again so I could take another astrophotography mode photo on the Pixel 4. we got a couple hours to go yet, so I guess um, I'll just wait here, but I will see you guys in my next video. <gasps> Is it time yet? Nope, only 422. Only a minute has gone by. I'm going to be sitting here waiting for a while.